The Bible reveals that the great dragon was cast out, and Satan, a slanderer, was cast to earth. Death is a topic of confusion worldwide with various beliefs and practices surrounding it. In the Western world, burials include coffins, underground graves or cremations. Buddhists in Tibet prefer sky burials, while Hindus in India often have open cremations on the Ganges River. Reincarnation is another belief, with the soul experiencing successive lives on earth. In Christianity, there is confusion about the soul's destination, with some believing it goes to heaven or hell, while others believe in purgatory for spiritual cleansing. The Bible warns that the supernatural will play a key role in end-time events, as spirits of demons perform signs to gather people for the battle of that great day of God. To understand death and what happens when we die, we must understand what life is and how God created us. In Genesis 2-7, God formed humans from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into their nostrils. The Bible defines a soul as a living soul, and the word soul is used in the same way as in 1 Peter 3-2. Death is the reverse of this process, as described in Genesis 3-19. Understanding the soul and the spirit is crucial for understanding the truth about death and the afterlife. The Bible uses the term spirit to describe the breath of life, which comes from God to make us live and returns to Him when we die. The spirit is not the same as the soul, but rather the breath of life, a gift from God that enables us to keep living. Many sincere Christians believe that we have a soul that lives independently of us and is immortal. The idea of an immortal soul comes from the Hebrew word ruach, meaning breath, and the Greek word pneuma, meaning breath or air. The Bible does not speak of the immortal soul or spirit when the breath of life is taken from us as it leads to death. The blessed and only powerful King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who alone has immortality, dwells in unapproachable light. Paul makes this clear in Romans 2, 7 and 8, 8. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor and immortality. Romans 2, 7. The idea of sinful man living forever first began in the Garden of Eden, where God warned his creation that if they transgressed, they would surely die. Satan contradicted God's command, and God drove man out of the garden to till the ground from which he was taken. Without access to the tree of life, no one can live forever. The popular view today is that when someone dies, only the body dies while the soul keeps on living. This belief is shared by many unbiblical religions, including Christian churches. Ancient Greek philosophers believed that humans possessed a soul which was a conscious and immortal part of life that goes on living after death. However, the Bible reveals that God made a living soul out of the dust of the ground and the breath of life. The Bible states that the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing and have no more reward for their memory. The dead do not praise the Lord, and those who go to the grave do not presently in heaven praising God. The dead do not praise the Lord, and when do we get eternal life? In the Bible, death is called a sleep and Jesus described this time of death before the resurrection. Jesus referred to Lazarus' death as a sleep, and Jesus resurrected him, saying, Come forth. Death is called a sleep in Psalm 13.3, and it is said that Jesus enlightens the eyes of the dead. People close their eyes in death, and the next thing they know is the resurrection of the just or the wicked. The hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the world. The resurrection of life and those who have done evil are discussed in the Bible with Jesus stating that the hour was yet future for this event. In Daniel 12 too, many people who sleep in the dust of the earth will awaken to everlasting life or shame and contempt. Jesus promises that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life and will be raised up at the last day. Jesus repeats this promise several times, stating that no one can come to Him unless the Father who sent Him draws Him. He also explains that when Jesus returns, he will go to heaven with him. The Bible is clear on this topic, and Jesus doesn't want us to be confused. The dead will be roused from their sleep until the heavens are no more, which takes place at the second coming of Jesus. According to 2 Peter 3.10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, where the heavens pass away with a great noise and the elements melt with fervent heat. Paul tells us not to be ignorant about this topic, but to be clear about the resurrection of the saved. The righteous dead will be raised first out of their graves, and those who are alive and saved will meet them in the air. God is adamant that we don't consult with the dead or supposed dead, as it is considered a violation of the law and testimony. In Leviticus 20.27, 20, 
a man or woman who is a medium or has familiar spirits, will be put to death, and their blood will be upon them. Deuteronomy 18.10.12 states that anyone who makes their son or daughter pass through the fire, practices witchcraft, soothsayers or interprets omens is an abomination to the Lord. The Lord drives them out from the world. The Bible clearly states that the dead cannot communicate, and mediums and channelers are spirits of demons who perform signs to gather them for the battle of God Almighty. Visiting a medium can touch the heart, but it can also lead to issues such as relationships, grief and loneliness. God is definite in his warnings about visiting mediums and psychics, and Leviticus 19.31 advises against seeking after them. The Bible truth about what happens when you die is more comforting than the false idea that the dead are living in a parallel world. The Bible tells us that we rest in the grave sleeping, and that Jesus will return and change us. In the last trumpet, the dead will be raised incorruptible and immortal, and all saved will be changed. If you haven't made the decision to be with Jesus forever, consider accepting the free gift of immortality. Jesus has offered to take the consequence of death for you, so that you can be with him one day.